Hey YouTube, Target Popper here. This is a Winchester 1873. This particular rifle is an original. It was made in 1888. And production of these rifles spanned from 1873 to 1923, if I have uh, all my information right. Um, there's a few different variations of these guns. You could have carbines, muskets, and that's kind of a loose term. And then you could have uh, a rifle, like this one. Um, basically, you have a rifle like this, it's a, if I remember right, it's a 24 inch barrel. You have the musket, which had a full length military style stock, including the barrel bands and everything. And then there was also the carbine, which was quite a bit shorter, I think it had like a 20 inch barrel. So, Winchester would make these for a very long time. These became known as kind of the guns that won the West. They had a few different calibers. They had the... 4440, which is probably the most popular, the 3840, there was a 3220, I think there was a different one too, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, recently I was in a gun shop, well I guess it was not recently now, it's been a while now, I've had this gun for a little bit. And there was four of these on the wall. This was probably the best one, bore condition and action wise. The bore on this one is not spotless or perfect, but it's very sharp, it's very shiny, there's a little bit of frosting kind of in the middle, but it's not bad. And this one shoots pretty well at 50 yards. You can get a group like that if you try pretty hard. And at 100, on one of them steel plates uh, from uh, Shoot Steel, the little, well, they're probably, I guess they're probably about that big. A little bit bigger than a printer sheet of paper. You can hit it every time with this gun if you're on rest. This gun shoots very well. Um, yeah, I, I reload smokeless powder rounds with, uh, for this. I use uh, oh, Hodgdon HP38 with a 200 grain. Uh, who makes the bullets? I make my own bullets, but I've also used Hunter Supply bullets. The brass is just a mix of brass that I have. The brass seems to last forever. So, and I use Lee dies. So, have pretty good luck with it. Never had an issue with this rifle. Um, but anyway, the story that I have for this particular gun, I was in the gun shop. This was the best one out of the group. There was a 3220. The muzzle was just, it looked just completely wallowed out. Uh, there was a 3840. The bore on it was kind of, you could see good rifling, but again, the muzzle was just destroyed. I think there was another 3840, but that one, the story is it was left in a smokehouse. And you could really tell the entire surface looked like the moon. I mean, it was insane. It was completely pitted all the way through. Somebody went through it and cleaned it all, all the active rust off of it. The wood was a really nice dark red color, but it, it stunk. It was, it was pretty rough shape. The bore was just completely gone. This one, I don't know if it'll focus, but you can see that nice sharp edge on that crown. It's not by any means 100% perfect, but this gun shoots very well, considering all it's been through. <clears throat> There's some interesting patina and rust on the gun. If you see, it definitely had an interesting life wherever it went or wherever it was stored. Somebody a long time ago appears to have cleaned it up with steel wool or something. But uh, anyway, we're going to take it apart just because we can. So stick around. Be amazed. This is where I would put a splash screen with some sort of cool animation and music if I had it, but I don't. So, uh, let's get started. Cock the hammer, gun is empty, nothing going on. What I like to do first is I like to take my hollow bit, ground screwdriver, dealy, very carefully remove the screw at the top of the dust cover. Now, a lot of these screws, you're going to probably see them and they're going to have a little bit of damage on them. It's not my fault. This gun is an original, and it was made a very long time ago. Just got to find something to put all my screws in. There we go. And it tilt it towards us. And this is the lug right here that the screw goes into, and it also engages the back of the extractor on the bolt. That's what opens your dust cover. <coughs> Excuse me. Put that in our little handy dandy box and just keep pulling back and there's your dust cover 
Let's set that far aside. There is a small leaf spring in here. That's what puts tension on your dust cover. We're not going to take that out. Um, I've seen those break before and you can't find them anymore. So we're going to leave that alone. Next we're going to take the side plate off. And very carefully give it a tap to disengage this plate here. And then at the same time we're going to take this screw out and we're going to leave the other plate in for now. But here you can see the inner workings of this marvelous toggle linked action. Pretty dang simple. Not a lot going on. It's actually a very simple, very clever design. Let's get you a little closer. You would have pushed the round into battery and the rifle would be ready to go. There's two leaf springs. I'm actually going to pop off this side plate now so you can see all the way through. There's a leaf spring on this side here. There's a leaf spring on this side here. Now the leaf spring right here is what puts tension on oop, our link fell out, but that's fine. The leaf spring on this side here is what puts tension on the cartridge elevator arm. And the leaf spring on the other side is what puts tension on the lever itself. I'm going to try to wiggle that back in from this side here. I think I can do it. Oh yeah. Oh, maybe not. No, I'm having troubles. There we go. So yeah. Uh, I wanted to put that back in that way I could show you how to, how to do it properly. So anyway, we're going to take this toggle out. Here's one toggle. And you can't put these in backwards or nothing because they only go in a certain way. Here's our other toggle. That's not rust on them, that's just grease. I actually put grease on these because I don't take this gun apart very often. There's no need to, it's so old. If I shot black powder, I take it apart pretty often, but I don't shoot black powder. I don't see a need to shoot black powder in this gun if I run the proper smokeless load through it. Here we have our loading gate. If I remember, this is called the King's Patent Loading Gate. You can take this screw out and it comes right off. Again, this is just another thing I don't feel like taking off. I have, it's pretty self-explanatory. You take the screw, the whole thing comes out. So we're going to take our side plates. We're going to set them in our big pieces pile. Oh, I got this in the foreground. Let's get rid of this. Let's put this back here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to decock the rifle very carefully. Actually, I needed to keep that open, didn't I? Oh, well. I'm going to remove this screw right here. Very, very carefully. You don't need to go fast with this. There's our big screw that goes all the way through the grip, all the way through the wrist. There's no need to remove these little screws up here unless you're going to mount a sight. They're very small screws, so be very careful. Alright. Now, I hate removing this next screw because it's a wood screw. Be extremely careful. With wood screws, you can strip them out if you're too quick, if you're too firm. If it doesn't want to come out, leave it alone. This one will come out because I've had the gun apart a couple times and I put a little wax on it. Not a lot. A very, very thin coat. And there's our wood screw. Don't over tighten this. Don't try to be too quick. Don't reef on it. Put that in there. Then we're going to take this screw out here. And this is actually the screw that retains. Actually, you know what I'm going to do first before we do any of that? We'll put that back down. Oh, we just dropped our pin. The pin for the uh, lever that uh, cams. Our toggles just fell out, but we have it right here. I'll show you where that went here in a minute. I'm actually going to take out the leaf springs that put tension on the elevator arm and on the on the lever first. That way we're not fighting them later. 
Let me put my fingers in there. Very carefully start loosening them up. Okay, that one's done. Hold that. Oop, slipped out. Yeah, this screw on the bottom here is a little bit uh, worn out. The threads are fine, but, well, unfortunately, they're a little chewed up. I like to keep the springs mated to their screws. That way I don't lose the screws and the springs have their original screws with them so nobody gets lost and everybody's happy. Just like the Bob Ross of gun videos. We're just going to put a little grease here and if we put too much, well, no mistakes, just happy lubrication. Anyway, next we're going to take out this screw here. And we're going to take out the screw on the opposite side. This does not go all the way through. It's actually a very shallow screw. We're going to put that in our handy dandy holder. And we're going to take this screw out right here as well. If I can get on it. All right, there we go. This is another one of those spots where don't reef on it, don't be too rough. This gun's pretty old. Okay. <clears throat> we can actually take the buttstock off right now. These screws here do not retain the butt the, the buttstock. You can take this off after you get the through screw and the wood screw off. I'm gonna set the buttstock in the back. Now to remove the lower tang and the lever and the elevator, actually, you need to take, I'm actually going to set that a little lower. Can you still see it? Yes, you can. We need to take this screw out right here. And this will allow us to remove the elevator arm. It will allow us to remove the lever and the trigger pack. Now. The reason I like to do this without the springs in it is because the springs will put tension on this uh, axis pin here, this pin or the screw, and it'll make it a beast to remove. And you can actually strip this out if you're not careful. So now that that's falling free, we're going to take this and just very, very carefully remove this. Here's our lever, and that pin that fell out is right here. That pin goes right in there. Some of these are in there and they've been in there for so long that they're seized in their lever and they won't come out. But this one is still pretty clean. So set our lever to the side, put our pin in there, and our elevator arm is still in the action. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna remove this, which is our trigger pack, and we're gonna do it very carefully. And there it is. Here is your trigger pack. Pretty neat. You can actually still see some of the old case hardening on there. Yeah, there you go. This must have been a beautiful gun back in the day. I wish whoever had it last would have taken care of it. But, oh well. It is what it is. Now, pretty common on these guys here is that the, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. Perhaps you will. But if you can see the half cock notch is slightly cracked. Probably not. Well, maybe you can. Slightly cracked. So I mean, when I use this gun, I don't use the half cock notch at all. It's either full cock or nothing. That sounds bad, but hey, it is what it is. Now to decock this like this, you actually have to pull back, push this button here, and then release everything. This little guy right here is a safety that normally when you have your fingers through the lever, you're squeezing the trigger, you're putting pressure on the safety. So it's kind of like an out of battery safety. I'm going to set that aside. Forewarning, I'll put this in the title, that way nobody gets, or I'll put it in the uh, description below. I'm not going to take this apart. I don't like taking this apart. There's no reason really to take this apart. Um, this is well over a hundred and something years old. I'm going to leave the parts where they're at. They're fine. They're okay. If you want to clean it, 
uh, soak it in something like croil or some sort of solvent and then just take it out and uh, just hose it out with something else you know degreaser and then put a nice coat of oil on everything next what we're going to do is we're going to take the elevator arm out There we are. Here's our elevator and the arm. See this little hole? That's where the rounded head of the arm goes into. It's got a little soot on it, but it wipes right off. Brass is pretty good stuff for applications like this back in the day. Got the old 40, let's angle it so you can actually see it. 44 cal. You can still see all the tooling marks and everything. Almost like it was made yesterday. Pretty cool. Pretty valuable piece, actually. We're not going to take the sights off of it. We are going to take the bolt out, though. I just got to look at it again. It's been a little while since I've done this, but I can do it. All right. I'm going to bring it to this side. Can you still see? Kind of. I'm a little far away, aren't I? Back in a second. All right, we're back. I just wanted to change some stuff up, and I was running out of time on the camera, so I didn't want to get all the way through this. Then have to reassemble the gun and restart the video. So, next what we're going to do is we're going to push this pin out right here. Uh, was it from the other side? That Yeah, this one has to come out from the other side, I think. Yep. There's this pin, which is a wedge retaining pin. This wedge right here retains your firing pin. Straight, well, yeah, your firing pin in the gun. Now, if you look at this firing pin, it's actually pretty beefy. So, do I have a different firing pin in here? I don't. Okay, that's fine. But the firing pins on these is pretty chunky. And this pin just basically goes in there and retains it. I'm going to put these two small parts. I'm actually going to put this through the wedge like this, and then I'm going to put it in my parts box. And there's one of the beagles going off. Okay, next what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to remove the bolt as easily as possible. I'm trying to make sure everything lines up. And it's just a simple fact of dropping the tail down and then wiggling it free. We're not going to take the extractor out, there's no reason to. That extractor's been in there since this gun was made. So it's probably not in the mood to come out. There's the firing pin hole. I mean, it's like a freaking black hole in there. Come on. Trying to find, there we go. There you go. Check that out. Pretty cool. So there's your bolt. Now we could stop here, but we can keep going. We can take the forearm off. Uh, the forearm can be a little intimidating. But if you can do the action, you can do the forearm. This is a completely, basically completely stripped action. We didn't take the uh, tang screws out, and we didn't take this pin out. But this pin is probably seized in there pretty good, and I don't feel like putting a hammer to it. So I'm going to leave that in there. We also didn't take the uh, leaf spring that puts tension on our dust cover out either. So, oh, and as you can see, this is a round barrel gun. These would come in a lot of different variations. Everything from octagonal barrels, you could get carbines with very short barrels. Um, you could really do it, almost whatever you wanted with these guns. That was back when Winchester would make a good firearm. <clears throat> Next, what we're going to do, I'm going to try to bring you over here a little bit. Seasick time. Sit that over here. There's a screw at the end of the magazine tube. And that screw retains the cap, which keeps the spring and the, um, the follower in place. Be very careful. This is very thin steel. This is, an extrude, this is not an extruded tube. This is literally sheet metal that's been rolled into a tube, so it's very fragile. A lot of these will have dents, dings. Some of them are as bad as uh, stopping function, stopping functioning of the rifle. Set that aside for a second. 
I need uh, something to pry that out very carefully with. You can actually probably, nope. I have a punch that I can very carefully use as a sort of a pry bar. There we go. I'm going to start just kind of wiggling this whole thing. It's under spring tension, but it's not a lot of spring tension, so you don't really risk having the spring fly across the room. But it can throw this cap, so be very careful. I'm going to take that screw that we just got out and put it back in the cap here. That way we don't lose it. And set it over by our big parts. And we can take our spring, which is still shiny after all these years. We're going to set it, well, we're mostly shiny. We're going to set that aside. We're going to try to get the follower out. Well, I guess I didn't have to try very hard. Here's our follower. It's not stamped. This is a chunk of milled steel. Now we can move back down a little bit. Not completely, though. Now to get the rest of this part, you have to take this pin out here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come from this side. Now mine isn't super tight anymore and I can push it out. It doesn't come out when I'm just walking around with it, but be very careful. You don't want to lose that pin. These are not easy to find nowadays. None of these parts are very easy to find nowadays. Originals, that is. Now we can actually pull the magazine tube out of the gun. I'm going to show you the seam from where they butted the rolled edge, or the uh, edge together. Try to get that, there you go. You can see that seam right there. That's where they rolled that sheet metal in place. And if we look down it, it's as straight as an arrow. I mean, it's perfect. You probably can't tell, but I mean, this is quality. Back in the day when they knew how to make guns, nowadays everything's made out of machine. Oh, it's so much more consistent. Yeah, but the tolerances are looser. The tolerances are looser, and they're just junk. I haven't really seen a new production classical styled gun that I've liked lately. And then we can take off this end cap here. Be very careful with these screws. Actually, you know what we can take off? We can take off the magazine ring here. Maybe. Oh yes. Yeah, <laughs> My bad. It turns. You turn it out of position. It's not a dovetail. So, see, if you try to move it like this, it won't come out. You have to take it and turn it. My mistake. I'm sorry. It's been a while. Again, I try not to take apart this gun very often. The only way I would actually take this gun apart anymore is if I'm doing more videos, replacing damaged components, or if I drop it in, like, a pond or something and it needs to be cleaned, or in the snow. Here's one screw for our foreign cap. And once you remove the one screw, it'll take tension off of this one as well, so. Once we get that to a point, we can just take it out with our fingers. I'm gonna set these over here in a spot where we won't mix them up with the other screws. We can remove our cap, and this is not a stamped piece. You can see the remnants of the super dark, rich bluing on the inside. You probably can't, but this, these pieces, this gun must have been just beautiful when it was in good shape. Now we can take our forend off. You have to take your magazine tube out before you try to remove the forend. You will crack this if you don't. The reason being is it wraps around the forend, or around the magazine tube. So if you reef up on this, you're going to split this. These are typically very dry. Unless you've been oiling this, they're very dry. So, be careful. They're valuable guns. If you have one, you know it's valuable. And hey, that's, that's it. Right there. Back her off a little bit more, and you're in frame. Sorry about that. Well, yeah, um, 
You can take this dovetail piece out if you want. It does wiggle, but I would suggest just leaving it in there because if it doesn't want to come out just by finger pressure, then it's not worth taking out. So, yuppers, that's it. It is a good idea to take one of these apart if it's an original like this, just down to this point, even if you don't do the action, just to the fore end, because as you can see on mine, it had a little active rust going on underneath the forearm. I've since taken care of that, but uh, these guns have been around for so long, some of them haven't missed the deer season since they were made, so, <clears throat> you know, it's not a good, it's not a bad idea to check it out. So yeah, we're going to pause the video right here, going to put it back together, and uh, I'm actually going to clean it first because I haven't, I haven't cleaned it in a while. It's smokeless ammo and it's modern ammunition and components, so there's no damage to the gun, but it, it should be gone through. So anyway, stick around, I'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm going to bring you all kind of back into frame. We're going to loosen up a little bit here, just a second. If you did it right, you should have a pile of parts that looks similar to that. You don't need the M14 um, castle nut wrench, but the rest of the parts you do. Bring you back up over here. Tighten it up. And what we're going to do, we'll take apart the buttstock here in a second. But what we're going to do is we're going to start from where we left off. Basically, just do it in reverse order. Take your forend, put your forend back in place. Your muzzle cap. And I will say when cleaning these guns, you have to be very careful. Um, come on, get in there, you. There we go. One of the beagles is going nuts outside. But you have to be very careful of the fact that these are softer steel softer material than modern firearms so you got to be very conscious <clears throat> excuse me of making sure your cleaning rod doesn't contact your crown because it's not going to be as forgiving as say an AR-15 or anything like that the metal is a little bit softer now you're not going to doom it on the first time but if you go beating the gun up with your cleaning rod on the inside of the muzzle you're going to have a bad time that beagle's getting pretty loud he's annoying I don't like the sound of beagles, They're, uh, they drive me nuts. I like them, they're nice dogs, but they just drive me nuts. Next, we're going to take our band for our magazine. Drop that into place, we're going to rotate it into, oop, I kind of missed there for a second, hold on. I'm gonna rotate this into place, let's try the other direction, there we go. Perfect. Now, don't put that thin pin in there yet, because that pin is what retains your magazine tube. It doesn't retain this. This action here, the back and forth, is what retains it. It only comes free if you turn it. So you need to take this, run your magazine tube back into its band, guide it into the forend very carefully. And then line it back into position. Check to see if we have clearance to the pinhole. And we could come forward just a touch. Right about there. Oh. Yeah, you've seen all that, but I'm at the far end of the thing. Here we go. Next, we just got to fish our pin out. Push that pin, push that back in place, and give that a little. Tap, bitty tap, with our punch. There we go. Back in place. Now we can take our follower. And it really doesn't matter which end of the spring goes in first because the ends on these springs, once they stop wobbling, are the same. So you can just take, kind of put the spring in there like this, 
put the follower back in the tube first, then put the spring in there, then run it all the way in. There you go. Now we're fully seated. I'm going to take our end cap here and take the screw out. You probably can't see right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this forward instead of moving you. Actually, I'm going to move you. You thought I wouldn't move you, but I did. Push this into here. Now, it should have some resistance left in there. Some of these are going to be a little worn out, so it might not want to stay in there unless you use uh, thumb pressure. This one still has a lot of life left. So we can rotate it back so the hole in the magazine tube lines up with the threaded hole for the retaining screw. Now I'm not very familiar with the modern renditions of this rifle, so I can't tell you if this is gonna be a 100% part for part of one of the uh, reproductions that are out there. So, if you are using this for one of those reproductions, thanks for watching. But keep that in mind, some stuff might not be 100% uh, the same. Okay, hold on to your lunch, we're going back. And we're framed up with the action. Okay, so we have the forend completed. We have our magazine tube in. We have our forend on. It's a little loose, so I'm going to snug up the screws a touch. Don't go crazy with these screws. They don't need to be extremely tight. Just snug so you don't lose them. There, that helped. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. So from here, we can put our bolt back in. And our firing pin. And everything that retained that as well. So we're going to wiggle our bolt back in at a position that I really am going to have a hard time seeing it. There it goes. Push that back into battery. Take our firing pin. If I remember right, yeah, it's got the flat of the firing pin has to be pointed up, or facing up technically. Run that back in. It's not running in all the way. Hold on. There it goes. I just had to see it. Is there a better spot I can put you guys? I'm sure there is. Let's see. Right here looks pretty good. Sorry for all the jumping around. But we're going to be doing that for a minute. Now that pin and that plate or wedge that we uh, put together earlier is what we need right now. So here's our wedge. This is going to be a taper piece. Okay, we're back. So the part has a wedge, kind of a taper right there. That's going to be facing out. Let's slide this back up and into here until the holes line up. Then we can take our pin and push our pin through just like so. And that retains the firing pin in the bolt, and it also acts as a guide. And you can actually see how that wedge pivots a little bit. That's what you want. So we're good to go right there. Next we can start putting in uh, parts like the elevator and the lever and all that kind of stuff. So Moving again. Hopefully not too much for you guys. Flip the rifle back over. Precariously balance it somewhere. Now we're going to take our trigger pack and slide it. Well, it's actually kind of actually easier to cock it first and then put it back in to 
be honest with you. Now I gotta just line everything up. Push back. Well done. Been a little while. Been a little while. Okay, there we go. There we go. Just like so. Alright. Good to go. Good to go. Next, what we're going to do, where's our handy dandy brass elevator bit? It's right over here. Your elevator only goes in one way. Well, it can. you can accidentally put it in the wrong way, but it's only supposed to go one way. This hole kind of looks like the green lantern symbol of kind of a little bit goes facing the butt stock. And slot that in. Now it's gonna want to it's gonna have a tendency to just go all the way up, or in this case down since the rifle is facing downward. Next we take our elevator arm and we hold on, I gotta get the orientation right. It's weird looking at it from this angle. Go into there just like so. Oop, we're putting pressure on that tang. Then we can take our lever. And slot that back into place as well. Now while we're trying to hold on to this mess of parts. We can turn it upside down. And that'll help us out a little bit. Now we got to find the screw. Which one was it? There's two of them that look very similar. Yep, definitely that one. We take our screw and we just line everything back up. Yep, there we go. Now everything's lined back up. We can tighten this axis screw down. And the hard part is out of the way. That was the hardest part to do. That should be pretty snug, not gorilla tight, but pretty snug. Now if you don't want this to be flopping around while you're reassembling the rifle from this point on, you can put your leaf springs back in. But what we're gonna do is we're going to put the uh, tang trigger pack retaining screws back in first. There's a little sawdust in my box, so I gotta wipe these off. Oop, dropped it, but my belly saved it. Alright. Now we can get them started. Hopefully they start without any fuss. And they're not gonna, so we're gonna take this one out. I'm going to try this screw instead. Kind of tedious. I'm actually going to try on the other side first. Hopefully that other side's a little easier to get started and should line us back up the right way. Where am I screwing? Whoops. Whew. We're okay. It's a bad thing about these uh, rests. They're not very good for this. This is actually a very cheap one. I wouldn't recommend buying it. I've had it for years. Push in just slightly. Don't want to cross threads. There we go. You got to line those up perfect, or else they won't start right. You got to be very careful because you don't want to cross the threads. There's no threads in the receiver, but it's in that lower tang, the trigger pack. So 
very carefully. Start this one. See, once they're all lined up, they don't give you any trouble. All right. Now, we can either do it two ways right here. We can put the action all the way together, or we can put the butt stock on. Since I do want to take off the butt plate to show you what's going on under there, we'll do the action here in a sec. Or first, actually. So, now we have to find the right... I keep dropping it. I keep dropping it. It's rubberized, so it's not going to hurt the gun. It's just annoying. Anyway. Sliding again. Stop it, you bugger. This, they, these leaf springs are very critical. <sighs> Your leaf springs are very critical. They're different. They're slightly different lengths. They have different contours on them, so they need to go in on their appropriate side. On this one, it needs to be curved down with the pin facing inward. Same with that one, but this one only goes from the right side of the rifle. Run the screw up through the bottom of the receiver. And you should be able to start it with your fingers. Yep, just wanted to make sure I didn't cross thread it. Then we're going to put our finger at the back here. That way, as we're tightening it down, it doesn't try to run away on us. Get the neighbors out shooting a gun or something. And that puts tension on the elevator arm. Next we're just going to flip the rifle over. That way we ain't got to move around a bunch. <sighs> Come on. Agree with me. Agree with me. Then we're going to put in the spring that puts tension on the lever. This is another part that you should be able to start with your fingers. Start that with the fingers. Make sure it's lined up properly. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we can tighten it down. Now this one's not going to try to turn out of the rifle as you tighten it. But I still like to hold it in place to kind of guide it in. And this one should be pretty snug. There we go. We're almost done, really. Next, we're going to put the cross pin in that goes in the lever. Then we can put our toggles in place. Whoops. Kind of missed. There we go. There's one. Make sure it's on the correct spot. Then we're going to do the other one. We're going to kind of do this one a little blind here. Because I don't want to turn the rifle over. If I turn the rifle over, this toggle on this side will fall out. One, two, and... Alright, we're all lined up. Now we can take our side plate that doesn't have our loading gate on it. Put your thumb on this toggle here. Actually, better yet, put it on this pin right here. Because this pin, if any of them, are going to try to run away on you. Alright. That guy back in. Snaps into place. This is plastic, so... Mine's a little snug. Give it a little tap. That way it doesn't go anywhere. Now we can actually hold it like this without anything trying to fall out. It's still in frame. Oh yeah. Now we take the part that has the loading gate on it, drop that in, and that just kind of squeezes in there as well. Now find your screw to retain your side plates, it should be the long one right here. And this is kind of a pain in the butt sometimes if you don't find it right away. I think we found it. Hold on to your side plate. Slip down. I'm not putting any forward pressure on this, so if I slip out, 
I'm not going to do any damage to the gun. Now we're just going to turn, 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 and we should be good to go. And that's the action. So our action is basically done. We just got to put that dust cover and lug back on. We'll test that out here once we get that on. Here's our dust cover. Slide it in from the back. Now to overcome the spring, because if you don't, if you just try to push that forward, you're going to break that spring off. And those little springs can be expensive. Take a punch, push it down, and then push it down again with a smaller punch, actually, because it'll try to pop up through the uh, screw hole. And then there you go. Now we can take our lug, wipe any dust or debris off of it, line that back up into our dust cover. This can be a bit tricky. But line that back up in our dust cover. And take our little screw. Get that started back in there again. This one should be fairly tight. Not insanely, but fairly. Okay. And there's our dust cover. Now we can test the action without putting the buttstock on it. Perfect. Everything works as it should. So next what we're going to do, something that I'm not too fond of doing, but we're going to do it anyway, and that is removing wood screws from very old wood. So I'm going to point you down. take out the top one because the thing about these butt stocks is they actually have a little compartment in them be very careful when you're doing this by the way where you can store ammo cigars beef jerky whatever you want to put in there that fits I've heard stories of guys finding old sticks of beef jerky old cigars I, f I found old ammo in this one and then um yeah and you just take this out here as well. There we are. Nothing super special going on there. You do have, if I remember right, oh. Oh, I'm thinking it's a Vetterly. Excuse me. I was thinking you had the uh, serial number in there somewhere, but you don't. And here is our butt stock, or our butt plate. There's our door. Here's the spring that runs up there. I have all this greased under here. That way it doesn't corrode or nothing. And then there's the screw that retains it. So there's no reason to take that screw out. But you can at least see what's going on. In case you've never seen under there. Or never had yours apart. Or can't get yours apart. Now I like to ensure that I use the same screws every time in the proper hole. In the hole that they came out of. It's easy to tell for this one. This one is just shiny, and this one has a little pitting on it, so I can tell uh, which hole they belong to. Snug, but not too terribly tight. Snug, but not too terribly tight. Again, they're wood screws. Don't reef on them. Check for function, and we're good to go. All this back in the frame. Slide this back on carefully, nice and snug. I'm going to run the long tang screw through first. Does this screw head? Oh, yeah. I'm actually going to swap it out. Oops. Missed right there for a second. Didn't do any damage. Oop, you're still pointed downward. My bad. And we take our final screw. And then we... 
nice and snug. There we go. That's it. That is the Winchester 1873 4440. That's the original. This is the 1885 made gun. And it's a cool gun. It's the only lever action rifle that I own. And I figured if I'm going to own a lever action rifle, it better be one heck of a lever action rifle. And it is one heck of a lever action rifle. Uh, insanely fun to shoot. It's kind of a, just kind of plunking a big 200 grain bullet in there pretty slow. But uh, definitely, definitely a reasonable gun to take deer with. Uh, medium game. I mean, this was the gun for a very long time. I mean, it didn't get the name, the gun that won the West for no reason. So, it's a very capable gun. A gun that really never got any wide military acceptance. Militaries looked at the gun, but nothing ever came of it, unfortunately. I honestly think that the American military, with the 1866 and this rifle and etc., so on and so forth, missed out on an opportunity to have a good carbine or rifle that really could have filled a niche that the pistols and the big big smoke poles of the day didn't. Um, they missed an opportunity, but hey, it is what it is. That's history. So, anyway, thank you for watching. Light Fairy Services. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed. I have an Instagram. I'll link it in the description below. If you have one of these rifles, you know what kind of fun they are. Very cool guns. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope I helped.